Hi. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use SQLite instead of local storage with your Ionic framework, Android, and iOS application. So, one might use SQLite instead of local storage if they are more familiar with uh, structured query language SQL. Um, and they prefer that over object-based storage, which is more like local storage. Uh, it, it really depends, it's, it's more of a preference. So to start things off, let's go ahead and create a new Ionic Framework project. So with that done, let's go ahead and add the Android platform. not in the right directory. <coughs> so because I'm on Ubuntu Linux, I am only going to be adding Android. Uh, but if you're on a Mac, you can also add iOS. This tutorial does work with iOS, it's just that I can't add it because I'm not on a Mac. So with that added, uh, the next step is to download uh, NG Cordova because that's what we're going to be using. It's the AngularJS extension set for uh, Ionic Framework. It makes a lot of things a whole lot easier. So on the uh, NG Cordova website it gives us a plugin to install for SQLite. Let's go ahead and copy it and we're going to add it to our project. You also want to make sure that you have downloaded the latest uh, NG Cordova release. You can download it right here. And I've already done that and it's on my desktop. So open up the uh, your project directory and then www and then js. And let's go ahead and copy that file into that directory. Let's go ahead and open up our index.html file. and we are going to add NG Cordova to our project. This has to be added above Cordova.js. So right here, let's go ahead and add it. All right, the last thing that we need to do in order to get NG Cordova working in our project is we need to uh, open up our app.js file and we need to uh, include it in our module. Just like that, we're ready to use NG Cordova. Let's clean this up a bit. And let's go ahead and create a new controller. Alright, so we've got a basic controller, we've got NG Cordova set up. Now we need to start adding it into our project. So the first thing that we want to do is we actually want to create a global database that we can use throughout our application. So in order to do that, we should probably create a variable that could be used throughout any controller and any function. So outside of everything, preferably at the top, go ahead and declare a DB. You can go ahead and make that null for now. That's going to be the variable we use when, when working with our database. The next thing we want to do is we want to add uh, the NG Cordova uh, command set, or the SQLite command set to our run. So let's go ahead and add that. All right, with that added, we can now use it inside of our um, on run uh, method. So let's go ahead and create a new line and we're going to go ahead and uh, open our DB instance.
Alright, so what this line does is it'll open up our database. If the database does not exist, it will create it. So right now my database is going to be called my.db. With that said and done, we want to create a new table because right now it's just an empty database. Doing queries on this will do us nothing because it'll probably just error out because we don't have any, any structure to it. So let's go ahead and create a new table. Alright, so what I did here is I'm creating a new table if it does not already exist called people. That table is going to have a auto incrementing uh, primary key value. It's going to have a first name and a last name. It's very simple. So now every time our, our application runs it's going gonna, it's gonna to open up our database and create a table if it does not exist. The next step is we want to add um, logic to our, our controller for, for processing this database. So let's go ahead and add the following. We've got to add Cordova SQLite. And let's go ahead and create a new method. Alright, so the purpose of this method is we're gonna we're gonna be able to insert a first and last name into this table. Uh, from any kind of HTML. So let's start it off like this. So we're actually going to be using prepared statement. So anything that's defined as a question mark will be passed into our uh, database calls. Uh, it, you, it's a good idea not to try to append your variables um, into the string. So, so don't do something like, like this. Don't do anything like that. That's, that's bad when you're working with queries. Use question marks instead. So now let's call our commands to insert. So it's going to go in order. Um, it's going to go in order from the question mark order when you start inserting your parameters. So you can see that the first, the first one, the first question mark represent, represents first name, which is right here. So we're going to pass first name and then last name, and that's all we're passing for this array. Uh, and then we're going to uh, work with our promise. And to keep things simple, we're just going to print out something. All right. So what's happening here is we are just uh, executing the, the query on our database, which we can access from everywhere. The query from above, and we're passing in uh, our array of prepared statement parameters. And it's going to print out the insert ID, the, the primary key value uh, that it inserted. So the, the next thing that we want to do is we want to create another function. And this one's going to be for selecting data. So what's going to happen here is we're going to select um, from this from this uh, table all rows that have a last name of whatever we defined. Which it could be one row, it could be multiple rows. It doesn't really matter. So 
So let's go ahead and write that query. Alright, so again I'm using a prepared statement. Do not use a st an asterisk here. Do not use a star. Do not use this. Actually write out what columns you expect. Otherwise, there is a pretty good chance that this plugin will not work for you. So with, with our query made, let's go ahead and create our actual execute statement. So inside of our promise, we want to print out the first row that was queried. Now you can, you can do a lot more advanced stuff than this, but I'm just keeping it simple. You know what? Let's first make sure that we've returned data. Alright, so I did this because we don't want to do any kind of operations if no data was returned. We don't want any kind of uh, out of bounds errors or anything like that. So we're first making sure that there, the row count is greater than zero. And now we can do our print. Alright, so you can see that I am getting the first row, and inside the first row I am printing the first name and last name columns. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go into our index.html and be able to uh, fire off these statements. So let's go ahead and add our controller. And let's add a few buttons. It's going to be super simple here. We're not uh, we're not doing anything complex. Alright, as you can see, I am going to be inserting uh, my first and last name. And then if I wanted to select from the table, I'm going to be selecting by last name or boy. So we're going we're gonna to watch this work. You know what? Just for laughs, let's go ahead and add the following as well. So that's going to print out if no rows exist. Alright, so going into our terminal, let's go ahead and build this project. Again, this will work for iOS if you are using a Mac. With that built, let's go ahead and install it. And 
and let's go ahead and watch uh, the logs as they happen. All right, open the app. All looks fine. Let's go ahead and select, and we get an error. So our error is res not defined. All right, that sounds about right because I probably named it wrong. So right here, I used result, not res. So we want this to be result. With that said and done, let's go ahead and recompile it. It should recompile quicker the second time. And let's go ahead and install it. And let's go back into our log. And we're going to watch it again. So we're going to select. And it's still erroring out. RES not defined. Uh, did I forget? Did I forget to save it? Let's look at the line number. The line number says it's line 40 in the code. So let's go back and check out line 40. And of course, I forgot one more item. Let's make that result. Hopefully that solves our problem here. Let's go ahead and build and install it again. Let's look at our log. And select. And it says no rows exist, exactly like we expect. So let's go ahead and insert. And we can see that we've inserted and the ID is 1. Now let's try to select again. See, it selected Nick Raboy, uh, exactly as it should. So let's exit out of our app. And let's make sure that this database still exists, which it should. So select. And this time, instead of saying no rows defined, it says that it found me, which is exactly as it should. So there's actually a lot to the uh, SQLite plugin that's not documented in the NG Cordova documentation. I actually recommend reading through the documentation from the uh, original provider which you, you can find here just a little slow internet but yeah the documentation only advertises um, opening a database and inserting we've gone ahead and we've selected from it as well you could also delete um, you can do other stuff as well. Oh. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of different commands in the, in the official documentation and it's worth reading. So just to summarize, what we've done is we opened up a, a database, created it if it didn't exist, we created a new table if it didn't already exist for people, we created two functions, one for inserting data and one for selecting data, and we showed how everything works together as an alternative to uh, local storage. This will let you do SQL queries just like any other native language. I know Android uh, native Java code uses SQLite as well. So if you're coming from native, this is should be an easy transition. If you like this video and are interested in seeing what else I have to offer, please subscribe to my channel as well as my written web blog. Thank you.